following interview was conducted with Mark Hermanson, Permit, Permit, Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry for the Purdue University of Oral Program. It took place on Friday, August 20th, 2010 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. The Thank focus you. of this interview is your recent position as Interim Director of Purdue University's Office of Agricultural Research Programs and Associate Dean of Purdue University. Okay, go ahead. Um, you were the interim. I, I was the interim uh, Associate Dean for Research and Director of the Indiana Experiment Station uh, between the time that Randy Woodson was appointed Dean of Agriculture at the end of 2004 uh, while they searched for a new Associate Dean in 2005. And that lasted 13 months. Um, Sonny Ramaswamy, who was uh, head of entomology at Kansas State, was appointed to the associate dean position, and I went back to being a faculty member um, in the Department of Biochemistry, but simultaneously I had in the middle of that appointment, the middle of the appointment of associate dean, I was also asked to serve as interim uh, co-director of the Bindley Bioscience Center in Discovery Park. So I still had that administrative uh, duty until I fully retired at the end of December in 2007. Uh, I was off then um, for a year and a half and uh, Sonny Ramaswamy was here as Associate Dean and Director. Uh, he then um, in uh, the beginning of uh, 2009 announced that uh, he had been selected as Dean of Agriculture at Oregon State University and would be leaving us in the summer and uh, Jay Ackridge, the current Dean of Agriculture uh, who we, we knew each other but only casually really did not know each other in a personal sense uh, he got some advice from some uh, several people, I guess, that maybe I would uh, be willing to serve as associate dean and director in the interim again. Uh, and he called me in May of 2009, asked if uh, I would be interested in doing so. And and uh, since I know the position and I know that most of the people, and uh, it looked like a really fun opportunity to get reacquainted with what's going on in the research, particularly in the College of Agriculture, but the fact is that the Associate Deans for Research at Purdue meet regularly with the um, Vice President for Research, Richard Bacchius now, uh, and, and we have quite a bit of interaction with each other. So. Um, there's a fair bit of interaction with the research community across the campus. For instance, one of the duties of the Associate Deans for Research in uh, the whole campus is to select um, grant applications that will go forward to agencies. Many agencies restrict many of their programs to one or two submissions from a campus like Purdue. So if there's 10 uh, groups vying for uh, being selected to actually make application under those programs, the Associate Deans for Research actually choose the winners and which ones will go forward as, as uh, applicants to particular programs. That's, that's a major responsibility actually for the Associate Deans. Uh, so you get acquainted with with what's going on in uh, not only the departments within the college, but uh, to a lesser extent to uh, what's going on with things across the campus. Um, the, the director of the Ag Experiment Station position um, relates not only to the research that's going on in campus, but also to um, the eight farms that we have um, uh, lying around the state. There are eight different research farms scattered around Indiana, plus the two that are um, associated with the agronomy department and the animal science department out on 52 west of town. Um, those duties 
were a fairly minor part of my appointment. I, I did some um, interaction with at least the people that direct the farms, but in both uh, stints as associate dean, I was really focusing and, and instructed by the dean to focus on the campus activities and to a lesser extent on the outlying activities. I, all of the duties dealing with commodity groups like the pork producers or the corn producers or soybeans and what have you um, were in the hands of um, executive associate dean for, um, I'm sorry, so ex now I'm going to have trouble with the title. Um, Marshall Martin is uh, in the uh, associate dean's office as assistant dean and associate director of, of the Ag Experiment Station, and he takes care of the interaction with the commodity groups and, uh, to a large extent, the outlying farms. And so I didn't have a lot of activity outside of the campus. Sure. Okay. All righty. Um, the relationship um, of the roles of the interim director and associate dean. Okay. Uh, the associate dean's position really is um, interaction with the faculty. Um, it deals with the on-campus activities, with the research programs that are going on in the various departments around the college, and as I said before, um, the interaction with the other research programs on campus because so much of the research these days is interdisciplinary. Um, from that perspective, the associate dean has um, a budget, uh, not a very big one, but but it has enough so that so that matching funds, for instance, can be uh, secured for grant applications uh, that, that require matching funds from the campus. Uh, we handle startup funds for new faculty um, and negotiate that with the department heads and the incoming faculty members. Um, there's a fair degree of control over the space that is on the campus. Those are all associate dean type duties, and so they're, they're really dean duties that get devolved down to the associate dean level. Or and delegated down. Delegated down, right. And um, in the College of Agriculture, I've been here now uh, more than 33 years, uh, the deans have always at least from the time that I became head of biochemistry in the early 80s, uh, from that time on, the deans have always put those kinds of decisions in the hands of the associate deans. And so the associate deans um, uh, really are, um, are uh, charged with, with handling that and not, not uh, bumping it up to the dean. And so uh, there's a fair bit of influence on uh, that. We interview all of the uh, potential candidates for faculty positions. Um, we're much... Do you serve on the search committee or just as part of the... No, interview it's part of the interview program. process. Okay. Uh, the, Good point. The interview process... Uh, the on way campus. That, on campus. When the candidates are here, uh, they will spend an hour with the dean and the relevant associate deans. Actually, even... Biochemistry, for instance, does not have extension. But even their candidates will meet with the extension director in that meeting. And so um, we, we do, uh, with the dean, we do talk to camp uh, candidates, and we have a great deal of influence on whether or not we're going to be supportive of hiring that person. Sure. Um, and, and there have been quite a few instances where we have sent the message we're not going to be supportive and uh, that uh, so we there's a fair bit of influence actually in the hiring process and it it makes an enormous difference uh, over the years how uh, the college develops and the department develops That's right. Right. so right. it's good right mm -hmm. um, you were talking about interdisciplinary research you might just make a point I know that's increased Right. Uh, as others all have of said, but all of the agencies that we interact with, NIH, NSF, um, particularly now the USDA, uh, their grant programs 
Well, DOE, the Department of Energy, has been that way from the start. Uh, but the USDA, their grant programs right now ha are changing dramatically. And the director of those grant programs, Roger Peachy, uh, came out of St. Louis from the Danforth Center. He's really an academic, but with a fair bit of industrial experience, too. Um, he is determined that the grants that come down from the Department of Agriculture um, will be interdisciplinary and they will include um, uh, basic research but applied research and actually extending it out to the users on the farms or um, forests or what have you. Uh, it's it's got to be an integrated program from top to bottom and uh, that's different from what I grew up with in the uh, 70s and 80s uh, where the individual investigator grant was really the thing that mattered. Um, but it's true of all the agencies now. They, they want uh, uh, the programs to tackle big problems. That means multi-investigator and, and cutting across the uh, disciplines. Uh, what Martin Jiske was determined to do here, to break down the walls between ag and science and engineering and all the others, uh, was really right on target for what's happening now. Uh, you know, to get people thinking about working together uh, that, that uh, uh, inspires uh, people with engineering expertise to work with the biologists, et cetera. Um, right, and the sharing, of, it's expanding the sharing of the resources. Right, and um, there's a good example in, uh, in it's actually in the College of Agriculture, um, a professor in ag and biological engineering is working with one of my colleagues in biochemistry and they both admit that they really don't understand what the other one does but they understand how each of their contributions impinge on, on getting the job done in sure. terms of the research and it's it's been fun to, to see Let that. me ask you this, for the younger people the new people on the block, it's more difficult now for them? It's more them? difficult to get grants okay. in the sense that the funding agencies are not as, as uh, flush as they have been times in the past, uh, but it cuts both ways. Um, the younger people come in with the knowledge and understanding and the desire to work in interdisciplinary programs. and so. They are sort of primed. Uh, it's the mid-career people that have developed successful programs around their individual grants that I think have a harder psychological time, at least, right. of getting these things going. All right, good point. That's very nice. Um, the uh, ARP's administrative support to departments and faculties in College of Agriculture, mm -hmm. Consumer Family Science, and Veterinary Medicine, for the researchers who address that. Um, the, ever since the, um, well, I don't know, maybe in the long-term history, but at least in the post-World War II history, uh, there have been formula funds that have come to land-grant universities based on how much agricultural products are sold in a given state. That's the basis for it. Um, and those have... Uh, been underlying support for the experiment stations. And there's a different pot that they call Smith Lever that supports extension activities, and a different one, uh, McIntyre Stennis, that supports uh, forestry. And so you've got Hatch, Smith Lever, McIntyre Stennis. What Purdue did back in the 50s when things were growing fast in the federal government. And quite frankly, I think it was something of a mistake. Um, they used a lot of those funds to underpin faculty salaries. And so we've got something like 17, 18% of our faculty salaries supported by these formula funds. 
which of course makes them non-discretionary because you've got to you've got to fund the faculty. Right. Um, the a, a fair bit of the rest of the monies is actually in the hands of the directors, um, either the extension director or the experiment station director. Um, and that's where we get a big fraction of our startup funds, uh, any kind of matches that we need to buy equipment or, or dealing with emergencies. Um, so that's, that's a fairly large fraction of the flexible monies that come into the, the uh, uh, ag administration every year. And um, so that, that is really what the director's job is. Now, there's also the operation of the, of the experimental farms. To a fair degree, they support themselves. Um, they sell products on the open market, um, uh, whether it's, whether it's uh, uh, beef cattle or, or hogs or corn and soybeans. Um, a, a big part of their budgets um, is actually from farm sales, but there's also some support from the experiment station. I see. Okay. Good. Good point. Okay. Um, the scientific endeavors support the portfolio within that, don't they? Of yes. The, of the AR. Sure. Okay. Um, and uh, the the current. Uh, situation uh, really is that the faculty are responsible for generating the funds that uh, are needed to do their research. Uh, we'll support them, we'll help them with a little bit of uh, matching funds or we'll uh, buy some equipment, that sort of thing, but in terms of the operations um, uh, there's no longer any um, funds that automatically go from uh, the formula funds to a faculty member's research. That, that simply, we just don't have the money to do that. So faculty members are responsible for generating the extramural support. And they've been phenomenally successful in the last decade. Um, College of Agriculture's uh, grant funds have just um, Expanded and expanded and expanded, and, and they've done very well. Um, uh, everybody understands that that's what the game is, and and they find uh, support from lots and lots of different sources. The federal uh, resources are there. There's um, there's uh, opportunities at certain foundations. There's opportunities to work with certain industries, uh, and. They've been very successful at, at getting the funds. And tapping into those resources that they have. Mm -hmm. that they can touch and in many research. cases, it's it's big groups of faculty that get together to tackle a, a big problem in a multidisciplinary sense. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, search process for, for you to move forward, were you involved with that? I, I wasn't. I well, of course, I wasn't involved with it. Um, I understand there's somebody... It's in place now. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. She came the first of uh, of June. Okay. And we overlapped a, a bit in June. And Good. Um, the it, because I was still teaching and doing a little bit of research and also had responsibilities in Discovery Park, I didn't watch the search process in two thousand and five very closely. Um, but I really did see uh, pretty closely what was going on this, this last time when they searched uh, between middle of 09 and into, into 10. Um, and I wasn't involved in the sense that um, I had any input into the process, but I did attend the, the seminars from the candidates and uh, like any other faculty member, I could feed back, but but uh, uh, that that was uh, that was really all that I had to do. They brought in, I believe, three candidates who gave seminars. 
uh, and uh, the head of animal science, Karen Plout at Michigan State, uh, was clearly the choice of everybody, uh, very strong preference there. Um, and I spent some time with her doing, during her interview, and then once the, the offer was made, um, I did spend time talking to her on the telephone. Uh, we hit it off immediately. Uh, Karen claims we think exactly alike. I, <laughs> I think well, that's a nice that, thing. Well, you know, that's... Uh, it's okay. You know, is, is she really <laughs> as smart as I think she is, if that's the case? <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, it, it's it's been a really good process, and I, and we've got a very good associate dean now. Yeah, that's nice. Well, I, well, you would you should be in, I would think be involved when she's being for the interview because you know you've been in it yeah. two times, and even if they didn't, I I think that would be sort of strange. Why am I right? No, but she was very anxious to to spend time with me, and and of course I was able to help her with. Personalities and all of the little pitfalls that uh, you need a resource like that, somebody yeah. you can call upon and who has no hesitancy about right. Close the door to, and and say things right. very frankly. That's right, and you need you need that kind of support. Yeah. and you can't operate without it. Then right. you're really at a sea. Right? Exactly. A um, couple on the world food. Did, did you happen to go to the thing when uh, Kabisha got his award? Well, I didn't oh. go to the award okay. ceremony. We were actually out of town. Okay. I think that was in October That's of '08. Right, yeah. yeah. And Wally Tyner and his wife and my wife uh, had a house rented in Provence, and we were in France. Uh, That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, I, it happens that Gabiz is a close friend. Um, his. He's t excuse me. He's tall. I, I think I told you I have interviewed him yes. when we were walking to do the video. I, you're, I thought I was tall. He said, no, I'm a little taller than you are. I'm about 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> right. But he's got a daughter that's an inch taller than him. <laughs> um, it, he and his family attend our church. Oh, okay. His wife's father was a Lutheran pastor in Ethiopia. Um, there's a fair number of Lutherans uh, in Ethiopia due to Swedish missions in the past, well, 1800s and 1900s. Mm -hmm. And I actually have met his father-in-law. He's, he's dead now, but uh, I, when I was on the board of directors of the Lutheran Seminary in Chicago, uh, I met him there. And um, so I, I've been close friends with Gabiza and Sunite and their family ever since we came, well, ever since they came. Sure, right. Uh, and so, yes, I did hear his talk in Fowler Hall um, whenever that was after the prize sure, was, right. was uh, and then he's also uh, given a couple of sessions at our church for adults forum and things like that. So, and, and of course, Phil Nelson was head of food science while I was head of biochemistry, so we're close friends with them. So I know those two food prize winners, and this year I'm thrilled that that's being awarded to um, uh, jointly to Bread for the World and Heifer International, uh, two operations that focus on hunger in both in the United States. Bread for the World it focuses on hunger it's worldwide. Okay. Um, it's, it's a, uh, it was started by, um, uh, I got to get, Paul Simon was the senator from Illinois, right? Yes, yeah, Senator Simon, correct. Yeah, Paul. and his brother, whose first name escapes me now. That's okay, you can use that. Um, uh, started Bread for the World maybe 25, 30 years ago. Uh -huh. um, it's an advocacy organization. It's not a charity. Okay. It's it's advocacy, and so those of us that are members of Bread for the World actually are donating money that's not tax deductible okay. to um, uh, lobby for bills that feed the hungry in this country and elsewhere. And, and 
Heifer International is an organization that um, buys animals to help uh, third world farmers um, establish a little bit of income. You know, they get a heifer, and, and uh, so they get milk and, and the proceeds when the heifer has babies and things like that. Um, and so that's that's this year's World Food Prize, and Purdue has strong ties with all of these. Uh, Wonderful. You know, it's really it's really great. Uh, I think one of the other nice things is that the prize after Dr. Nelson got it, that the governor established that prize to be awarded mm -hmm. the one, you know, on behalf and, and his name, and I think it's wonderful yes. that he did that. It's just, it's wonderful for them, but it's great for Purdue. Yeah. Um, well, and Purdue has such a long history and is so well known around the world for agricultural assistance. Right. Over the, the land grant era, the whole yeah. time. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and well, and that's what. You know, the big um, international programs in agriculture uh, when we first came here were heavily focused on South America. We pulled out of there because they don't need us anymore. I mean, there are competitors, for heaven's right. sakes, Brazil. Yeah, a long, uh, uh, long history, and I've interviewed some people who were involved in that program. Yeah. It was wonderful. Right. And they did. It really took off. And I've had. And once they've done their job, then that's it. I've had Brazilian students in my lab. Uh -huh who were actually in agronomy, but they did some research in my lab sure. uh, back in the 80s. Uh, you know, now they're professors in, in Brazil. And yeah. in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, Niger, and, and uh, that area, we've had long history there. Um, and so, um, and now we've got, we are the university that's running the program to train uh, professors of agriculture in Afghanistan and uh, you know it's going very well if we can just keep the country somewhat stable it um, it will work and so Purdue's got a very commendable history of, of uh, assistance with agricultural development around the world right, exactly. and going and ongoing mm -hmm. right yeah all the post post retirement activities? Well, I uh, took two weeks and went to Pacific Northwest. Uh, we're uh, another week and a half. We're heading for uh, New England and the Maritimes for a couple of weeks. In March, we'll, uh, we'll uh, travel to uh, the Western Caribbean uh, with uh, a cruise that uh, is organized by my college, well, my, my college and my wife's college, St. Olaf College, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, so we're doing some traveling. Um, uh, I'm president of the Bach Chorale. I'm singing in the Bach Chorale. We've got a new director. Um, I've got continuing activities at church. Um, there's, uh, uh, I, my wife and I are both uh, supporters of Lafayette Urban Ministry. I've been helping with that a little bit. So I have no worries about keeping busy. That's uh, every day is a busy day, right? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> But I've also started to read some books. I haven't had time for that for 30 years. <laughs> so. I have friends like that, too. And well, they're on the shelf. And one, one day, I promise I'll take it off the shelf. <laughs> I started a, a wonderful biography of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, when I retired the first time. Got a couple of chapters into the book, realized it was a good book, and then became associate dean. And <laughs> it sat, and so I had to wait until I got done being associate dean, but I've, I've read that book now. Oh, okay. Traitor to, his uh, Traitor to His Class is the name of the book, and it's very good. Well, it's nice that you kept on in the community, because there are many activities that one can be involved in. Sure. And, uh, and it's, it's enjoyable at the same time. Yeah. Well, I served for 20 years on the planning commission for this county, and, and getting to know people through that avenue, lawyers, Developers, uh, farmers, uh, just people from the around the community the that, that goes you, to make it up. Yeah, most most people on the campus don't know those folks, and okay. so I know lots of people. I've been involved in Democratic Party politics forever too, because Sonia Margin's a close friend and sure. also goes to our church. Actually, she was one of the founders of our church. Um, so you know, there's lots of 
things to do that are interesting and uh, keep you busy and engaged. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Herbert. I You're really appreciate it.